In the spring of 1996, an ambitious seven-year-old girl named Jessica Dubroff was set to break a world record. With a love of flying, she was to become the youngest ever pilot to fly across America. But poor decisions and bad conditions led to a somewhat predicted tragedy, destroying a community of those who followed the young girl's journey and changing aviation safety laws forever. This is the heartbreaking story of Jessica Dubrov. Jessica Whitney Dubrov was born on May the 5th, 1988, to parents Lloyd Dubrov and Lisa Blair Hathaway. Her parents were from Ukraine, but lived most of their lives in Falmouth, Massachusetts. When Jessica was four years old, her parents moved to the San Francisco Bay Area, a city known primarily for its culture and a nice place to go on holiday. Jessica's mum, Lisa Hathaway, played a significant role in Jessica's life. Lisa was a self-described healer and thus, didn't believe in Western medicine, traditional schooling, children's books, or even toys. Due to these beliefs, Jessica grew up very differently than the other children around her. Her mother's unconventional lifestyle meant that she had no toys to play with, no TV to watch, and wasn't enrolled in school. Many describe this lifestyle as bad parenting, and with reports that Lisa was in fact a squatter, living off handouts from a local health food store, it was clear that Jessica hadn't had the best start in life. Jessica's parents separated soon after arriving in California. Despite the divorce, Lloyd Dubroff, who was Jessica's father, lived close to the two. With no toys or TV, Jessica enjoyed riding horses and worked the paper route. Despite her hardships, the money she earned from the paper route, Jessica would take to the post office several times a week and mail it to children in South America, which even at seven shows what kind of person she was. Despite Jessica being less educated, her parents were over ambitious and wanted her to create a world record for flying across the country. It is surprising that Jessica's mum wasn't the only over ambitious one, but her father Lloyd was as well. It was established that he had studied engineering at Florida State University, but he never graduated. He was a tall man of about six foot four and longed to be a pilot, but his height worked against him and he was declared too tall to fly in the Air Force. Apart from chasing his dreams and eventually leaving them behind due to his height, over the years, he was seen in many courts as defendant in cases of taxes and car repairs. But what exactly happened to Jessica? And how did her journey into flying at such a young age begin? It all started when Jessica celebrated her sixth birthday. Whilst other parents were getting toys for their kids, taking them on special celebrations and spending quality time with them, Jessica's birthday was quite the opposite. Her father Lloyd suggested to her the idea of taking flight lessons from a man named Joe Reed, who gave lessons out of the Half Moon Bay Airport. Jessica became enthusiastic about flying. She took great interest in it, and willingly, Jessica accepted to take flight lessons from Reed. Along the line, her father also convinced her to fly from coast to coast at a young age, which would make her the youngest pilot ever to do this, and this made Jessica even more enthusiastic about flying because she wanted to break the record. In 1996, at just seven years old, Jessica's parents asked if she wanted to fly across the country and stop in and see her grandfather for her eighth birthday. Jessica quickly agreed, and her father Lloyd and the flight instructor Joe Reed were to go with her. The trip is labelled the Sea to Shining Sea trip and would make Jessica the youngest pilot to cross the USA. Hats were made to commemorate the trip and were handed out to friends who were excited but obviously very nervous for the family. The plan was to have her pilot a small airplane from Half Moon Bay to Massachusetts and back, making her the youngest pilot on air, a record that has been excluded from the Guinness Records book since, which we will get into later. Many speculations were flew around, but one that caught interest was from Lloyd's landlord, who evicted him from his house earlier that year. He said, I don't understand how he could come up with the money to pay for a flight like this, which could only mean one thing. Lloyd barely had enough to keep himself going and went all in with his daughter as he believed the record breaking would definitely attract a lot of fortune. On April the 10th, 1996, Jessica started her journey across the coast, setting to break the record. Due to the fact that Jessica was so young, Reed had to fly with her, acting as the co-pilot. The plane was a four-seat single-engine propelled aircraft manufactured in 1975, which like most aircrafts, had dual flight controls. Jessica was asked to sit in the front left seat, with Joe Reed sitting in the back with Lloyd. 
It was agreed that Reed would be paid for his services at normal flight instruction rates, plus compensation for the layover time. It didn't take long for Jessica to be the talk of the town, and a lot of people took interest in her adventure. Obviously, many opposed the idea, but there was nothing much they could do. The journey was to be a one-week circuit flight, and right from the announcement, Jessica gained a lot of media attention and had people coming out to greet her at every stop. She flew until nightfall and then ended her first stint of the journey in Sky Harbor Airport in Wyoming. They settled down at Cheyenne that evening and were welcomed in Wyoming's capital city by Mayor Leo Pando. Some media interviews were executed before they got a ride to their hotel. While en route, they heard about the bad weather conditions to come. The weather that was currently clear and okay was quickly deteriorating. The director insisted that they stay at Cheyenne, but Lloyd insisted that his daughter wanted to beat the storm that was approaching, and they decided to take off despite the weather conditions. In other words, they took off ignoring the effect the weather might have on them. Just before leaving, Jessica spoke to her mother on the phone. During the conversation, she was eager to get going, saying, I've got to go, Mum. The rain is coming. While they were in the air, the rain intensified and they were not able to cope efficiently under the heavy weather. The visibility of the airport dropped drastically, which promoted Reed to exit the airport's control zone. It was around 8.24am when he took off and turbulence was high. According to witnesses, the plane lifted off and climbed slowly with its wings wobbling and reaching an altitude of a few hundred feet, started rolling down. The plane then crashed at an angle at Carnegie Court, missing a house with two women inside. These two women later said to the media that they were lucky to be alive. Jessica, her father, and Joe Reed were instantly killed on impact. Jessica's last words recorded by the flight tower were, Do you hear the rain? Reed was ejected from the plane with his seatbelt still on, and Lloyd was lying on his side with his arms reaching around Jessica. What could have been a record-breaking and remembered event in history was remembered, but not for the expected reasons. It didn't break any records, but ended up with the needless death of a seven-year-old child. The incident was tragic and attracted a lot of attention online, forcing the National Transportation Safety Board to investigate the incident. It wasn't until 11 months later the final report was published. It claimed that the pilot in command at the time was Joe Reed, who, when the rain started, took control of the plane. This was not surprising, is during turbulence, it is advisable for people with more knowledge and experience to take the reins. Several experienced pilots also gave their speeches and believed it was due to the drastic changing of weather. They said the weather would have been hard to handle and had quick effects on the plane. These experienced pilots also stated there is no way they would have taken off in those weather conditions. The safety board emphasized that the storm and high winds and rain is what caused the accident. They also said that the plane was overweight. It was eventually established that Joe Reed was the probable cause for making the wrong decision in accordance with the weather. These conclusions definitely won't bring them back, but prove that records such as this should never be tried out as it's endearing, reckless, and dangerous. Obviously, a lot more people agreed, including the government, and just seven days after the crash, the federal legislation passed a law to prevent similar records. The law forbids individuals without both a private pilot certificate and a valid medical certificate from operating in aircraft's controls when they are, making an attempt to establish a record, participate in an aeronautical competition, or perform an aeronautical achievement. Jessica was buried at Mount Hope Cemetery in California. May her, Joe Reed, and Lloyd Dubroff rest in peace. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. This is not an AI channel, I do all of this myself, the research, writing, editing, thumbnails, etc, and I upload every Thursday. So if you enjoy my work, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.